So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the production of microneedles and how they can actually be scaled up and a little bit about a, a future outlook uh, for the actual field. At the moment, there is a concerted effort ongoing in the industry to reproducibly manufacture microneedles at scale. And this is something that is very welcome. So as many of you will know, microneedles has been a technique that was first proposed in the early 1970s. And it has taken some time to actually, first of all, be able to actually manufacture microneedles on a small laboratory scale in academic laboratories. To a situation now where we know that this is an extremely promising technique for drug and vaccine delivery and minimally invasive patient monitoring, but also that there is increasing effort from industry to manufacture on a reproducible and a mass scale. And there are a number of different manufacturing companies that are active in this space at present. And what they're doing is they're, they're taking the basic methods of manufacture that would have been carried out in a university laboratory and looked at the key parameters that were important for scaling up. So one of those, of course, would be reproducible molding of microneedles if they're based on an aqueous polymer gel. If, on the other hand, the microneedles are produced by cutting a metal sheet, again, that needs to be done reproducibly and on a large scale. Or alternatively, the microneedles may be made by 3D printing or by injection molding. So all of those processes need to be done reproducibly, on a mass scale and be done at a, a level that would be suitable for good manufacturing practice standards so that it could gain approval by the relevant authorities for production in the first line of clinical trial supplies, but ultimately scaled up to, to a large commercial scale for production of actual uh, final product for use by patients. There has been a lot of progress in this area over the last few years, such that we now are in a situation where from a, a commercial point of view, mass production of microneedles is certainly going to be viable. Recently, the PATH organisation, through funding from the UK Department for Overseas Aid, has brought together key players in industry, in academia, in the pharmacopoeia and in regulatory bodies to think about a global outlook for microneedles and microarray patches. So are there some critical quality attributes that we can assign to microneedles in the same way as we would a tablet or a traditional transdermal patch? And can we then devise a series of tests that would be suitable then for studying those critical quality attributes. So for example, um, uniformity of content of either a drug of, or, or vaccine in the microneedle. A test for penetration. So how do microneedles um, behave? Can they penetrate probably an artificial membrane, maybe something like parafilm? How do we study that? Do we study that with microscopy or can optical coherence tomography play a big role in studying the actual insertion depth? And I think by working together that we will be able to take the field forward in terms of assigning these critical quality attributes, working with regulators and the pharmacopoeia and industry and academia together to understand um, what it will actually be required to take the field forward to actually help patients. I think another key aspect then will, of course, be advancing manufacturing and clearly efforts are underway to do that. I would like to conclude there. I would like to thank um, my own team in Belfast, to thank the, the team from Mickelson Diagnostics and also, of course, to thank you for your attention. Thank you.